Hello fans of Sports in Space, Lorenzo here and this is another installment of KSP Engineering where we're selling the LDS Jellyfish, named so because it has no solid rocket boosters, hence the name Jellyfish, you know, a sea life form that hasn't got any bones. It's fluff, it's, it's fluffy, it doesn't have bones, it's cute, our rocket is called the Jellyfish. Stats are 200 tons to low carbon orbit, just twice over the last um, entry in the range. 5 kilometers per second of delta V, a liftoff weight of over a million kilograms and a cost of over half a million Kerbal dollars. So let's see how this gets on, shall we? Putting the throttle at the full position, enabling SAS and pressing the go button. Now this launcher again, it has a few quirks, for instance these center side boosters, center side boosters yeah, they run out of fuel just a few seconds before other outer boosters do, and well, I could drop them, uh, drop them correspondingly sooner, but I don't because that would complicate things. So, uh, do it yourself, rocket enthusiasts. That's your window for squeezing a few extra meters per second, Meet a few extra meters per second out of this thing. So, what we do here is we launch straight up through the thick part of the atmosphere, at least until the outer boosters are gone, and then a little bit more, because you'll see as soon as these outer outer boosters drop off. The core rockets have just enough enough power to, to keep going to prevent us from actually decelerating again. But they, in the first moments of their uh, solo, so to speak, yeah, they don't have the oomph to properly accelerate. So here the two um, divergent boosters run out here, and just about 10 seconds later the rest is going. So prepare for separation, there they go rocketing away and they usually crash into each other, look at that, look down for some fireworks, if you carry passengers you can tell them that. So looking at the speed here, it's remaining constant, but these three ones, they have to warm up and get used to their solo performance, and now they're getting back into the hang of it. So usually with this rocket I wait until about 18 kilometers before starting to slowly pitch over. You don't want to, to overdo it, and as soon as you get, as long as you get out of the thick part of the atmosphere on time, uh, this rocket has a little bit of leeway, about 200 meters per second of leeway to get yourself into orbit. So, super precision flying as it was necessary with the Alias Fireworm, for those of you who tried that, probably will attest to that fact. It's not quite as necessary here. So, we'll do our pitch over and end up at about 45 degrees, just under the 30 kilometer mark. Now, near the end of their burn, these three uh, heavy boosters, they um, are capable of accelerating the rocket at quite significant um, amounts of G. Um, not anywhere near 10 or something, but enough to somewhat destabilize control, especially considering you've got a pretty hefty payload on top of it. So near the end of their burn you may want to throttle them down to about 75%. It depends on your flying prowess, your payload and just that particular flight. but it is an option in the flight path. In this demonstration here we are doing that. The throttle is now set at about 75 to 80 percent. Well, we're about ready to start leveling off. Actually we are leveling off already and all we need to do now really is to boost for about a kilometer per second in the sideways direction to establish that good old orbit. So here, once again, it's a little bit of a weird fuel sequence. I couldn't work that out, but it doesn't hamper the rocket. The, f the center column burns out first, and then the outer two follow suit just a little bit later, upon which, of course, we separate and hand over the limelight to our space-grade booster, of course, with the high specific impulse, 380 seconds only in space. We're at 75 kilometers now, so we can point perpendicular to the horizon by putting the nav ball marker here right on the crack between brown and blue. And you better not tell your grandmother that's what rocket science is about, but yeah, you might. I'm, I'm not actually sure how that's dirty. Brown is just inherently dirty. Um, and, oh, that was incredibly racist. Sorry. Um, they didn't mean it like that. Oops. Great, so what we're doing is we're selling a rocket. So buy this one for just half a million credits and it will get your 200 ton payload or otherwise known as five orange tanks and some spare bits 
into a nice low Kerbin orbit. Here we're at 1700 meters per second. Our fuel in the top booster is above the halfway mark, so ground control is feeling confident. At this point, you may want to look at your trajectory, see if your apoapsis is doing anything ridiculous. Um, it's not at the moment. Um, if this is now, if you f if you wonk up your flight path a bit, this could be all the way out here. Then you might want to wait until you're actually at your apoapsis to circularize your orbit, rather than um, just throw your rocket really high and then fall back and crash and burn and cry. So yeah, we're actually going to do that in just a bit because we're at two kilometers per second now, and we don't have quite that. We don't have quite enough fuel to just brute force it from here we are going to coast to our apoapsis that was me cutting the uh, cutting the engine short not as running out of fuel time accelerating to our apoapsis of 145 kilometers now this means uh, a little a small degree of sloppy flying it is always better to get into orbit in one solid burn and with that i don't mean a solid rocket motor boon rocket motor boon a solid rocket motor burn um, I just mean a solid burn as in well executed and my ability to speak is rapidly deteriorating must be done something to do with this space thing so here at apoapsis or thereabouts relighting the engine turning on SAS boost 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 smash and bash and look at that it's a beautiful periapsis being born oh how will it grow in life and achieve its goals or so we hope so I think that's a con a confident demonstration we are in low carbon orbit with 200 tons of payload and even a drop of fuel to spare so you might fine-tune your orbit or make it a retrograde or a polar one in fact here one of the test articles is still residing in polar orbit look that still has the factory name of 200 TLK LKO instead of the LDS jellyfish just over half a million bucks get it from the link below leave your comments in the description or the forum topic whichever you prefer thanks for watching check back next episode for the 400 ton edition and we'll doubtlessly run into some problems throwing that much junk into space good night to you and your families I'm Lorenzo see you next time